701, I think we can get rolling. Um, I do have the chat window open here on my other screen. So if someone has a question at any time, they can type it in there. Um, I will try to leave, like we're here till about eight o'clock. I really try hard not to keep anyone too late. I'll keep my eye on the chat, but if I miss it, I'll try to get to them at the end. Uh, maybe we'll try and leave five minutes at the end for Q&A if anyone has uh, any questions at all. Um, probably easier with this many people to keep your mics muted until we get through the talk. I have a bunch of slides I want to go over. Pretty excited to share this with everybody. If you haven't seen me before, uh, been to one of my talks, <clears throat> pardon me. My name is Derek. Um, I'm the founder and creator of a company called New Earth Organics. Now, this isn't a New Earth Organics focused talk at all. This is literally about immunity. Obviously, we offer some of the products we're going to be talking about tonight or some of the herbs, but this isn't about uh, a brand talk at all. This is more about getting you know, the knowledge into your hands, how you can build the best bulletproof immunity that you can. Uh, this is a little, take, a, different of, a little different of an approach on immunity than you're probably used to. I'm going to show you more of a foundational way how to build your immune system so that you can live your healthfulest life ever going into cold and flu season um, instead of symptom managing. And I'm going to get into that as I go through it. Um, I just want to say I am not a doctor. So a little bit of a disclaimer, just because this isn't medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. I'm here to share information, how certain herbs and practices were used traditionally. These are things I do for myself, my family, my clients. Uh, in no way, shape, or form am I trying to say uh, to not go to the doctor and, and take what I'm saying as medical advice. Absolutely not. So you should always talk with a qualified health professional. You know, go to your doctor if you want to start anything new, any new activity, any new herb. Um, talk it over with them. Get advice. But again, I'm here for information and to share what I've learned over the past 20 years of studying plants as medicine. I'm so passionate about taking our health into our own hands and using that to our advantage. Because when it comes down to it at the end of the day, my belief is no one can heal yourself better than you can. Obviously, guidance from a practitioner um, always helps in that to guide you. And sometimes we need that extra support. But intuitively, I believe that we know ourselves the best. If something's not right, we know, no matter if they're telling us it's in our head or it doesn't exist, or they're not on the right path. You always got to follow your own intuition about that. Um, and I'm so passionate about explaining this and teaching people from a different perspective on how we can actually take back what I call health sovereignty. And that's really, <clears throat> excuse me, like I said, taking your health back into your own hands and being in charge of what you do with your life and your health paradigm. So I think now is the time where we need to really embrace this new paradigm on the planet of this health sovereignty. And really, this isn't a new practice or a new idea that I'm sharing with everyone. Basically, we're going to talk about traditional means, um, traditional ways that people lived healthfully for thousands of years. But now more than ever in these centuries past, we need to harmonize you know, the foods that we eat, the activities that we do, the herbs, the fungi, the bacteria. Um, all of that together into one so that we can thrive in our modern day world. This is not the world that our parents or our grandparents grew up in. It's radically changing at a rapid pace. There's so many new exposures to humanity that we've never before seen. The, the fascinating thing is through my studies over the years, I found more than ever how if we look to traditional ways of doing things, they always seem to answer questions that pose us and problems that pose us in the present day. So again, this is for me to share information that I've learned, help you take charge of your own health, um, to seek out those qualified professionals when needed. But really, this is more about of a foundational approach to health. So if you've ever seen me talk before, um, or been to any New Earth Organics functions or anything like that, you know that we always follow a seasonal approach to health and wellness. So the outline for tonight, we're going to start with something called seasonal attunement. We're going to talk about what this is, how do we attune with the seasons, why it matters, and how we put this into practice, because we're all here to build that bulletproof immunity. We're going to talk about the pillars of this seasonal health and how we can address what is called our surface immune function. This surface immune function, and I'll get into it um, in a second, defining it more, but this is our public protection layer of our immune system. When we look at the ancients and how they describe the immune system, there's different levels to our immune function. 
There's surface level, which would be your public external pathogen protection. And then there's that deeper intercellular health and function, right? So this class is all about cold and flu season and building that surface level immune function. So what organs support that we're going to go over? We're going to go over the important characteristics of the seasons that we're in and the ones that come. We're going to go over something called the Y Qi, which goes back to Chinese medicine and Taoist tonic herbalism. We're going to talk a little bit about Ayurveda and the lymphatic system. And then we're going to get into seasonal herbs. So these are the herbs that you should be using ongoing daily throughout the different seasons ahead. So late summer, fall into winter. So we're going to try to cram everything in together in the next uh, 50 minutes or so. What you should be doing for the remainder of this year going into the next year to help build that best immune system you can possible. We're going to talk about how to use these seasonal herbs. And now I wanted to also include this last section in tonight's talk. This is about acute immune function and protection. So this is because no matter what you do, you know, you might be doing everything right. We're all going to come down with a cold or flu at some point. Obviously, we want to try to build the best immunity we can against that. But there's going to be times when you're fighting something or you come down with something full blown. So I'm going to give you guys a cheat sheet. Actually, both of these sections are mostly cheat sheets on how to deal with this. But this acute immune function, we're going to talk about what I would call the immune toolkit. So these are things to have on hand, how to deal with a cold or flu if you come down with it or fighting it, what activities you can use to support that. And um, I'm going to mention specific products, companies I have no affiliation with. They're just things that you'll find in my cupboard at my house and what we use. I'm going to go over those. Again, give you the full rundown cheat sheet. I'm not going to gatekeep anything. going to share everything that I know about the immune system. So if that sounds good with everybody, let's get deeper into it. Oh, someone's saying they can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Yeah. Is it too quiet? I see Sherry's giving a thumbs up. Is it too quiet, Sherry, or can you hear it fine? So Sherry says it's good. Um, so Sonia, I'm not sure. Maybe you can turn up your volume a little bit. Let me see someone else says they can hear me fine. Um, let me know, Sonia, if it doesn't change and I'll try to adjust the settings here. I do have a volume on the mic. The gain goes pretty high if I adjust it. I did teach a few classes. Like I said, this is my third one today and I sound tested it pretty good. So hopefully it'll, it'll clear out for you. I know there was actually problems. I just saw before we logged on here that Zoom had major outages today. So their bandwidth was affected somehow. Uh, so I was fingers crossed that we would be on for tonight. All three of my talks so far have launched fine. But uh, hopefully it's not to do with that. Jean says she can hear me. Okay, great. I can hear fine, Donna. Excellent. Hi, Donna. Okay, great. So the first thing I want to start with is what is called seasonal attunement. Literally, this means being in tune with the seasons, living in harmony with the seasons. This is a practice that has been known for thousands of years that we have almost forgotten in our culture or within humanity. This is the practice of realizing true robust health. Now, we find this time and time again mentioned, mentioned throughout um, antiquity in every herbal tradition. But when we attune to the seasons is when we're in relationship or harmony with what they would call the macrocosm. So that means the Earth's position around the sun dictates how our circadian biology, our physiology activates. We're going to get more into it. It sounds pretty in-depth. I, again, I've got a cheat sheet that'll help you guys through this, so don't get overwhelmed. But we're going to look at seasonal attunement from a Taoist tonic herbalism standpoint. So this is what we are as New Earth Organics. Um, I'm an Eastern Western trained herbalist. You know, I specialize in medicinal mushrooms, Chinese medicine, Taoist tonic herbalism, and seasonal attunement are kind of my big things. If you're unfamiliar with Taoist tonic herbalism, this is a system of herbalism that is about taking little bits of herbs daily often. It emphasizes the promotion of health rather than the elimination of a disease. So this is a preventative, prophylactic approach to health and wellness. This is about taking substances now and activities you do to avoid big problems later. So little bits now to avoid big problems later. And I can't stress that enough. This is different than your traditional medicinal herb system that would a lot of times symptom manage. 
Now we can use tonic herbs to symptom manage as well, but when we embrace specific tonic herbs at certain times of the year, we get a fundamental healing and that robust practice of realizing robust health going on. So the Taoist tonic herbal system is actually the most sophisticated and effective herbal system in the world, yet it's also one of the easiest. And like I said, it emphasizes a promotion of health rather than an elimination of a disease. This has been perfected over thousands and thousands of years. So we're saying 3,000 years successfully, but to make it into the upper echelon, what we would call the super class, the highest class of herbs to become a tonic herb, they, pass, they have passed thousands and thousands of years of guess and test. So the, the system has already been worked out for us. We just need to follow the blueprint. Now, at a core, at a nutshell, this again is about living in harmony with nature and natural substances, which is a lot of what Taoism is all about. Now, this is living in harmony. This is the big thing. Like I said before, our body is a cohesive, self-healing organism. We want to facilitate bringing it back to health. You know, when we cut ourselves, our finger heals, for example, or our cut heals, for example, same goes for when we have a dis-ease. When we facilitate that healing using tonic herbs, specific activities, and living in harmony with our circadian biology, this is when we bring back to center and coherence, and we start to build the best immune system and body structure possible. Now, one thing to mention is that I have yet to find any modern prevention theory that can compare to the safe and effective track record as tonic herbalism. Doesn't mean that something won't be invented that will exist, but to date, that this is the safest, most gentlest, most effective form of herbalism that I know of. Now, <clears throat> why? Why is it important to live in harmony with nature? You don't have to take my word for it. <clears throat> we see throughout history mentioned multiple times the reference to how living in harmony with the season change and living within the confines of that season or being um, in relationship with that season is how we realize true robust health. We see here from Hippocrates, who's the father of modern medicine, it is cheaply the changes of the seasons which produce diseases. Changes of the seasons. We see Charaka, who's the father of Ayurveda, which is the traditional herbal system in um, India and parts of Southeast Asia, but Ayurveda, all diseases begin at the junction of the seasons, right? Direct quotes there. We find the Neijing, which is the uh, one of the main textbooks in Chinese medicine. I believe it's the first, if I remember correctly, the first two chapters of that book is all about living in harmony with the seasons and the macrocosm. We see here, <clears throat> excuse me, from the book of Sun Wen, the transformation of internal energy with the seasons is the basis of the growth and the destruction of life, right? The life and death cycle. If this natural harmony is disregarded, the root of one's life will be damaged and one's true energy will wane. We find Gao Lian, who's a 16th century medical scholar. Again, one cannot successfully obtain health without cultivating this vital connection to the macrocosm of the seasons, right? So again, it's that macrocosm. It's our circadian biology is programmed to where we are around the sun that dictates certain activities. And I'm going to define this more and get into it, um, I think, on two slides coming up. So stick with me. But my point is, is, we see this time and time again, that this is something that should not be disregarded. And I I believe it is the missing link or the missing key to health and wellness in the modern day age, right? We've kind of thrown this all to the wayside because we live in a, a time where we can get strawberries 24 seven at Safeway. We live in heated homes. You know, we're not exposed to the cycles of nature as we once were. So again, it looks comprehensive and it sounds really hardcore, but how do we follow the cycles of nature? Well, not to worry because the blueprint has been worked out for us. And I'm going to give you guys a cheat sheet coming up, um, which you can take a picture of or a screenshot. Um, actually, any of these slides you can take a screenshot of. Uh, if you're on a PC, you can, I believe, just hit print screen. If you're on a Mac, you would want to do command shift and the number three. And that should take screenshots for you. Or you can use your cell phone. But this here is the comprehensive template. This is the blueprint that Taoist tonic herbalism and the seasonal attunement theory follows. And now you'll find this, excuse me, variations of this throughout every ancient herbal tradition. This is also known 
excuse me, in Chinese medicine as the five element theory. We'll find it in Ayurveda. We'll find it in you know, ancient Greek herbalism, you find it basically everywhere with certain different slants on it. I teach it from the Taoist standpoint, where we divided everything in the natural environment into five distinct categories. So over thousands of years, they were able to divide up everything in the natural world into these five distinct categories. Now, in Chinese medicine, they teach it with elements. In seasonal attunement, we teach it with the seasons. So if you think of everything in the natural environment, what does that mean? That means everything from a color to a sound, to a taste, to a smell, to an organ, to plants, to foods, anything you can think of that's in the natural environment can be broken down into these five categories, which if you've never read about five element theory or researched this, this is just mind blowing how they figured this all out over thousands of years. Definitely something you can brush up on um, in your spare time if you're interested, but basically this cycle of nature for seasonal attunement uses instead of an element the seasons at the forefront so we know the season cycle change by looking at this now how we show or how we relate this to immune system and organ health and immunity is we look at the organs for these seasons we know that each organ system is broken down into these five categories as well so right now for example we're in what's called the spleen stomach season going into autumn right into fall it's lung season Going into winter, it's kidney season, spring is liver season, and heart is beginning of the summer. Now, when we look at this, we traditionally know four seasons of the year. They've broken down summer into two seasons where it's beginning of summer and late summer. And if you're from the uh, Calgary, Alberta, or anywhere in Alberta area, you know we definitely do have a beginning summer and a late summer. They're quite distinct in their seasonality. So again, when it's an organ season, what does that mean? So lung season, what does that mean? When it's the organ season, so say we're in autumn, that means that whether you're aware of this or not, in a 12-month period, your cells are breaking down and rebuilding again, right? So in a 12-month cycle, you're actually cellularly a new person. In a seven-year cycle, even your bones are renewed again. So during a season's uh, organ season, that organ is breaking down and rebuilding again for the next 12 months ahead. It's basically in an easy way to put it, it's doing its thing. This means that those organs are the most delicate at this time, but they're also the most able to be helped at this time. They need the most care, but they're also able to rebuild stronger than ever at these times. So we live in a culture where we don't really know the seasons. We don't know the element theory. One thing that resonates with us in North America here in the West, at least, is the season of fall, which we know as what? Cold and flu season, right? So what I like to explain to people, it's not like these colds and flus just disappear at different times of the year. We also looked at its lung season. So our lungs are our most intimate connection to the outside environment, right? They're like a direct hole to the inside of our body. That tissue is very delicate. When it's lung season, our lungs are the most delicate they can be. They're rebuilding, repairing for the next 12 months ahead. So we're more susceptible to things at this time of year. On the flip side, we can also build back stronger than ever at these, this time of year for our lung health. Now, what you do today is, again, going to help you for the next 12 months ahead because this is a cyclical pattern, right? Right. So when we want to focus or when we hit a certain season, we want to focus on those organ systems as much and completely as possible so that we're rebuilding them for the next 12 months ahead and for even next year. So what we do today with the immune system is going to even help us next year again. So hopefully that's not too overwhelming. Um, if there is questions about that, at the end, we can go back over this, but I'm going to give you the cheat sheet so you don't have to memorize this. You don't have to know it. You can just take a picture of it and kind of get the bullet points, uh, the, the Blinkist version of a Coles Notes version, where you can arm yourself with the cues and the seasonal um, characteristics that are most important to you going forward. Again, you don't have to digest the whole thing. Just knowing the surface level will be good enough. Now, when we talk about the immune system or health for colds and flus, And how to obtain what I call this bulletproof immunity. How do we build that? What are the seasonal pillars to do this? How do we obtain this rock solid immune system? 
And again, we're talking about the surface level immune system, the surface level immune system. This surface level immune system is known in Chinese medicine, Taoist tonic herbalism, as something called the Y Qi. This also means the protective Qi. So again, this is the, the facet of the immune system that helps us from external pathogens. And we live in a time now more than ever, people are more concerned about contagious external pathogens. So this is perfect timing to kind of teach this, explain this. <clears throat> and it turns out we're at the perfect time to start the process of rebuilding your immune system for this cold and flu season. So when we look at the Y Qi, this protective Qi, we need to look at the three seasons ahead till the end of the year. It all starts with what we're in right now, which is the season of late summer. This is basically the spleen season. What you need to know is it's the digestive health season. So this is where we need to tune up our digestion, make sure it's working as best as it can be. This is where our digestive system pulls and extracts nutrients, um, also extract chi or energy from the food that we eat, helping the body build the nutrition and build our blood so that we have good amount of healthy red blood cells and white blood cells to fight pathogens. So it all starts with step number one, that's late summer. Now, when you read about the season of late summer, we already talked about it, it's the spleen stomach season. Just as a side note, this spleen does mean actually the spleen, but the whole representation is not the Western anatomical of just the spleen. This digestive season encompasses the stomach, the spleen, the pancreas, and parts of the GI tract. You can just think your overall digestion. Now you might be saying, oh, I have no problem with digestion. I don't have acid reflux. I don't have these things. It's so much deeper than just that. Obviously those are cues that something's not working right, but it really trickles down to how fully we extract uh, the nutrients, the energy from the food we're eating, how we're assimilating that food properly. Next step is addressing the lungs. So as we go into fall, autumn, and again, these are marked, the season changes are marked by the equinox and the solstice. However, there's no straight lines in nature. So even if we have such a nice warm late summer, we can still carry on the practices of late summer until you're fully confident, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're in fall or autumn season, right? We can definitely tell in, in uh, our, our area when fall hits, right? We usually even get winter weather when fall hits. But the second step is the lungs dealing with the lungs in Chinese medicine. So the lungs are responsible from extracting the, the chi from the air or the prana, they would say, from the air that we breathe, mixing it with the digestive system nutrients, okay? So two forms, that the body is, is somewhat of an open system, but let's say it's a closed system, where, where are we, how are we putting energy into the body? It's through the foods that we eat and the air that we breathe. That's how we get this energy into the body. Third step, is addressing our kidney system as we approach winter. Now the kidney system is responsible for pushing our immune system. You can think of it as like the battery center. Um, I have a good diagram coming up that'll explain this, so don't feel overwhelmed by this. But this is like our battery center of the body where it's pushing out, pushing out the energy of our immune system. We can also see that this system represents our bone marrow, right? A major site of production of white blood cells, red blood cells. But it's this strength of the kidneys that helps emanate this Y Chi, this, this immunity, this surface level immunity. And again, like I said before, focusing on each organ in its individual season, right? Right here, each individual season, we're going to strengthen that, func that function of those organs for the next 12 months ahead. So the time is now. We want to start right away. So the basis of the immune system going into fall, again, this Y Chi, I'll say it again, this is the surface level immune system. We're going to talk, um, yeah, I got a couple more slides to kind of define it more, so don't feel overwhelmed with that. But again, it's the food that we eat, extracting the nutrients from the air that we breathe is also extracting the chi, the energy. So the food we eat, the air that we breathe coming together to build the facets, right? Our spleen's making lymphocytes, our blood is being built, our chi is being fully, fully topped up and then emanated by the kidney system. So if you studied Chinese medicine before, you know that the chi resides in the blood. All you need to know by this is when we say chi, we're also somewhat talking about blood. So this is the quality of blood and how it moves throughout the system, right? We want our workers, our lymphocytes, our natural killer cells to move effectively throughout the system to keep us healthy and protected. 
Now, I mentioned this before, but the Y Chi is our first line of public protection. They literally talk about the Y Chi um, in Chinese medicine as a force field of protection, which is really interesting. Now, when we look from a physiological standpoint, we know that this Y Chi acts to protect the surfaces of the body from viruses, bacteria, and other invading pathogens. So, this is our immune system in terms of how it, it uh, interacts with our orifices. So anywhere an external pathogen, right, virus, bacteria, can enter the system, that's where our Y Chi acts, okay? So we can think of our mucous membranes, our mouth, around our eyes. We take this further that when you look at a diagram of the Y Chi, now this is showing three fields. We don't need to get too bogged down on the different fields because it's a little bit more esoteric. But we now know that science shows under the skin and above the muscles, we have a fine network of lymphatic tissue. This fine network of lymphatic tissue that lines our body, that's the concept, the scientific physiological concept of what the ancients have been talking about forever. This type of uh, lymphatic facet of our lymphatic system is called the salt, the skin-associated lymphatic tissue. We find that, again, this per is pervasive in the body, everywhere around the body and concentrated at our orifices of the body. So we have concentrated lymph nodes around the mouth, the nose, the ears, the eyes, and anywhere on the skin, we have pores. This is what regulates keeping our pores open and closed. And it's what helps deal with any sort of external pathogens. So if you do not have a strong Y Chi, it means that your lymphatic system is weak in that area because you're not having the proper blood flow, proper Chi flow, proper lymphatic flow to those areas to deal with these external pathogens. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. It seems again, a pretty far out concept, but they talk about it like a force field. But like I said, now we now know that science has shown this is part of the lymphatic system. Now, the really interesting thing to note is when it comes to Ayurveda and immunity, they dub the, the lymphatic system as its own organ. And this is the most important organ in their whole herbal system. So Ayurveda, the first step treating anybody um, tr with Ayurvedic herbalism is we evaluate their lymphatic system. Poor digestion leads to lymphatic congestion. So when we're in the season of late summer, the digestive season, when we're not digesting the foods that we eat properly, when we're not extracting those nutrients properly, as well as not fully digesting the proteins that we eat, the fats that we eat, those undigested nutrients go down into our intestines and they start to bog down what's called our mesenteric lymph nodes. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Voice is hanging in there barely though. It starts to bog down our lymphatic, our, our mesenteric lymph nodes. So when, if you've ever heard before that 80% of our immune system resides in our intestines, this is what they're talking about. These mesenteric lymph nodes. It, majority of lymphatic um, nodes need to be in that area because the food that we eat, if it's not digested properly, if it has, you know, pathogens in it, we need to effectively deal with that because that's being absorbed into the system. So common, common in North America, modern day world, poor digestion leads to this lymphatic congestion, right? So it's so important to give as much energy as we can to our digestive system. And the time is now for that. We're literally in the summer of the spleen stomach. So the time is now. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to go over some seasonal characteristics because I know that was a lot of info. And again, you don't have to memorize that all. The few slides coming up are going to give you, like I said, the bullet points and how we address each season. So this slide here, I'm just going to look at time. Yeah, we got a little bit, or we got quite a bit of time left, so we're doing good. This slide here is going to go over the seasonal cues. So if you're going to take a screenshot, you're going to take a photo, this is one of the main slides you want to take a photo of. This is the whole um, <laughs> download cheat sheet of how we can address the next three seasons ahead to build our bulletproof immunity. Starting with, like I said, late summer, the current season that we're in. So what do we want to do right now? Okay, so let's look at the characteristics. This <clears throat> is the time for the spleen stomach, right? The digestive time, like I said before. We want to look at specifically the important tonifying qualities. We'll go over the rest of this here in a second. This is the most important. These important tonifying qualities. These help 
decipher, decipher what type of diet we should be eating in this season goes for every one of these seasons. So when we look at these tonifying qualities, embracing these colors, tastes, energies are going to help our digestive system. So this is even before we look at supplements, tonic herbs, you know, things like that, the medicinal mushrooms, even before we get to that, we need this foundational approach. If you remember at the very beginning, living in harmony with the seasons, that's how we begin this whole gamut of um, building bulletproof immunity. So first thing, late summer, we want to look at the color of yellow. So what does that mean? That means yellow foods, yellow herbs at this time of year are going to be the most beneficial. Even wearing the color yellow is going to be really help, is going to really help, excuse me, to um, tonify our spleen stomach. I just saw a question here. Yes, question is from Melissa. I'm just going to answer this question because it's a good question. How would this work with different diets like keto or carnivore? The same regard or the same same method. So within whatever diet you currently utilize, um, you can embrace these qualities better or, or effectively. So you have to think maybe outside the box. A lot of organ meat will be yellow if you're on a carnivore diet. The taste of sweet could actually be from certain organs can be sweet. So we're not talking about sugar with sweetness. Um, the idea is also to brace what the, the uh, mother nature is giving us at that time, right? So what is seasonally available? So it depends on the person. I know with the carnivore diet, it can be uh, massively effective at reducing autoimmune and things like that. Um, so if that works for you, you need to work within the confines of that diet and try to embrace these the best you can. But ideally, we're looking at what's what's mother nature giving us in our local environment and choosing the best foods and herbs within that. So hopefully that helps answer that a little bit. So when we look again, so foods, the color of yellow, what are some examples of foods that are yellow? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, we can look for, if your carnivore diet would be bone marrow, would be like a slight yellow. Bone marrow is really good. If you're on a omnivore diet, you know, if you're just eating whatever's locally, whatever's produced, yellow would be things like late summer squashes, winter squashes, uh, sweet potatoes, you know, corn, if you're into that really the sky's the limit. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule where it has to be yellow, everything, yellow, everything. If we look at, you know, the old adage, like I said before, no straight lines in nature, we are, yeah, butter, butter, perfect, butter, yellow food, right? We're building that nutrition, a huge fan of butter personally. We're building that nutrition for the next months ahead. Um, we need to look at the color gamut though, as a broad spectrum of color, so this is anything from the reds, which is the beginning of summer, to the yellows, to the oranges. So anything that's really colorful in that color spectrum is going to be effective at this time of year. If we actually look at uh, butter, for example, right, that vitamin A is actually red by nature, but because it's diluted within the fat, it becomes a yellow. So it's that, that gamut of reds, oranges into yellow. Effective, effective, effective at this time of year. Now, getting back to sweets, like I said, well, if you look at when you bake like a butternut squash or something like that, it's going to give a sweetness to it. Again, we're not talking about sugar, but we're giving sweetness. Um, we can look at herbs like uh, maitake mushroom, sweet to it, a slight sweetness. Now, this one's a harder one to decipher in terms of modern day world because we're so used to that sugar and sweet and everything. Um, if you're on like a natural whole diet, usually you're not using a lot of sweeteners or sugars. So you'll find this abundant in other places. But this would encompass honey, right? Yellow, sweet food, excellent at this time of year. We want to also embrace fragrant foods. So something uh, that would be really good at this time of year would be like baked pears, right? We're kind of getting to that, that time where we crave naturally those baked sweet kind of foods. Um, and more. it's just basically more dense carbohydrate type foods. Now, this is also the energy of damp. We'll go over this more when we get to the herbs. I don't want to bog everyone down. But damp means uh, this is the time of year where we can accumulate a lot of dampness in the body. So we're going to want to use herbs to drain that out. Um, not something you have to worry too much about for this talk, but know that damp can also relate to candida or yeast or fungus overgrowth. So we want to keep that in check at this time of year. But this is really important here. We see the energy of friendly, calm, and generous. Even by, you know, and even if you don't feel like you're calm or generous, you want to be generous or friendly at the time, it's one of those situations where you fake it till you make it is what I like to say, where if you're acting friendly, calm, generous, right? Giving out, you know, this is the perfect time of year to 
bake your neighbor, neighbor, that sweet apple pie, give it to them, right? You're being friendly and generous. Those qualities are actually going to help tonify your digestive system, which I know seems far out, but constantly science is validating a lot of this research. They've done research into the spleen, stomach, um, organ system, and a lot of these things to show the validity of this. So it really does mean something that energy, right? Thoughts are things that energy goes a long way to tonifying the spleen stomach center. So that's late summer. We can go over more buzz points coming up here ahead. But again, those are the, the quick rundown. One thing I wanted to notice or uh, mention, excuse me, is the associated tissue. We're currently in the season of the muscles. So you'll find a lot of people, and I should mention the emotion too, but we're in the season of the muscles. So this is the time of year. If you have a physical muscle issue that you've been dealing with, it might be popping up again. It might be kind of rearing its head. This is also the time of year where we can build back effectively to heal those issues. One thing I wanted to mention specifically, I forgot is the, the emotion of the season. So a little bit different than the energy. This is talking specifically about the emotions we deal with. <clears throat> this is the time of year where worry and overthinking really impact the spleen. Now, these will at any time of year, but the good news is, is that this is the time of year we can get over this. So overthinking leads to anxiety so much in people. This is the time of year we can get a strong digestive center going, a grounding approach to the system where we can start to transcend and break through that anxiety and worry. Okay, now moving ahead into the season of autumn, the lung season, very, very important season. This is the heart of cold and flu season because of the lungs being so, so delicate at this time of year. So what we want to do is we want to pay special attention to the lungs. So herbs that support the lungs and herbs that support the large intestine, right? So we want to keep our bowel going clean, uh, clear and effortlessly. Um, so we want to tonify these two things. We also want to look at the skin and the health of the mucous membranes and the lymphatic system. If we've done a good job of here, this will usually take care of itself. We're going to go over herbs that will help address this, so not to worry. Lung season is also the season of sadness and grief. So again, if you're holding these emotions, which most of us do hold some sort of sadness and or grief, this is the perfect time of year when we hit fall that you can start to break free of that, start to heal that, and start to resolve those issues. Now, the important tonifying qualities of fall, autumn, the color white. So we want to think, again, white foods, white herbs. And again, it's going to be shades of off-white to white for sure. Um, you know, things like inside of an apple would be white, for example. We can think cauliflower. We can think potatoes, right? Lots of tubers are white inside. And again, no straight lines in nature. So those light yellows into whites are all going to tonify that lung system. It's going to make it the healthiest it can be, right? Ginseng, a white herb. Those are things that we want to embrace. This is the time of year where our foods need to be a little bit more pungent and aromatic. So how I like to explain this to people is think pumpkin pie spices. Perfect time of year when we go into fall for those pumpkin pie type spices. Those aromatic herbs that are dispersing, right? They push out. So think about your cinnamons, your cardamom, your clove, right? Those are powerful, powerful kitchen remedies, powerful, powerful things to add to foods at this time of year to help build those lungs up and to really capitalize on the second pillar of immune health. Now, this is the season of being dry. So we want to keep fluids going in the system. We want to start adding a little bit of more minerals to the diet. We want to start adding more fats in the diet so that we're going to keep that moisture inside the body, right? Um, this is also where the energy starts to move inwards from being out. We don't have to get too deep into that, but this is how the energy starts to turn around and go start to go deep in the body going into winter to keep us warm and healthful. This time of year also is the time for helpfulness. So helping friends, right? Through sadness and grief, just supporting each other. It's also the season of righteousness. Um, so if you're wanting to be righteous about some self-righteous thing, this is the time to do it. But you're really starting to work through this season with grace, um, helpfulness, getting through the sadness and grief, but really embracing these white foods, pungent, pungent flavors, um, secondary in both of these seasons would be sour, but this is going to help balance out liver functions and it's going to help the large intestine there. So again, late summer to fall, then moving into winter. Okay. So again, this is the three steps but I'll say this once, if not a thousand times, this is what's setting us up not only for this year, but for the next year and the next year and the next year following this kind of protocol. 
So when we hit to the season of winter, that is the kidney season, also known as the adrenal gland season. So if you're someone that, again, deals with anxiety, hopefully it's gotten better if you've been addressing spleen, stomach, moving through lungs into kidney. Um, this is the season for emotion of fear. We can work through our fears, right? We can plan all winter to get through our fears as we then would move into um, spring. But this is the season we need to face, pay special attention to the kidney bladder system. So this is the time of year we really want to embrace adrenal tonics, adaptogens, getting those in to boost up what we would call our fundamental kidney energy, our Jing energy. Now, this is the battery of the whole system. It pushes out. Our kidneys are literally our life force battery. When the kidney system is worn down and tired, the body starts to become worn down and tired. When the kidneys are no longer putting energy out, that's when the party's over, the battery dies, and we transcend. So when we, turn, when we talk in terms of longevity, overall longevity, it's the winter kidney season that is the most important. Okay, This foundational kidney, kidney energy is going to be the most important for us in terms of longevity moving forward. Now we see this is also the season of bones and teeth. Um, I know Nadine Artemis says never go to the dentist in the winter because your teeth can usually be the most fragile, usually in the, in the least best state of health because again, you're trying to build back this kidney system. So your teeth and bones might take a little bit of hit. Um, she usually talks about it at late winter is when you wanna not go to the dentist to get your checkup, you kinda wanna go summer or before that. But the important tonifying qualities are the color of black. So again, black foods, black herbs, even black clothing can help tonify this kidney system. We want the taste of salty. So we start to embrace more salty foods. So what's something that's black and salty? You know, if you're, if you're vegan, it could be anything from like a fermented black bean dish. Um, a traditional one in our local area would be dried meat, salted dried meat. True, it's slightly red, but that encompasses the color of black. You know, think of like jerky, the color of beef jerky, for example. These are the foods we want to embrace more throughout the winter, those storageable foods. So salty would also be your fermented foods, right? Quite salty, your sauerkraut, your pickles, things like that. And embracing those types of foods, those overwintering foods throughout uh, this season. Now, again, it doesn't take a genius to know that the energy is of cold, coldness. So we want to try to embrace the cold while obviously not going too far out, but you'll see a lot of people are into, and I'll mention it in a slide coming up, but cold showers, uh, walking outdoors, cold plunges. We live in an area of the world where some people would kill for the amount of cold that we get because cold is so powerful for the kidney system. We find that cold exposure, our immune system goes off the charts in terms of a positive benefit. We can get like a cold plunge or a cold shower for three minutes gives you, it's something like two or 400 times the amount of serotonin brain chemicals that you would normally get. So embracing the cold at this time of year can be amazing. So it's not always about staying warm, cozy in our, our climate controlled houses. It's about embracing that season or that energy of the season. This is all about knowledge too and truth. Knowledge means planning, you know, working, hibernating and planning for the next 12 months ahead. Okay. So again, late summer, autumn to winter, those important tonifying qualities are what we want to embrace those times of the year. Now, when we talk about, you know, the body, like I said, is a self-healing organism. We want to still use these tonic herbs and foods <clears throat> that help us bring us back and facilitate that healing of the system, right? So this is a cheat sheet. Again, we don't have time to go over it all, but this is something you're going to want to take a screenshot of. Obviously, these are some things that we offer, but there's things on here that we don't. It doesn't, this doesn't have to be from us. This isn't a, a product um, brand talk at all. But the reason we deal in these herbs is because they're so powerful throughout these seasons of the year. We'll see too that herbs, <laughs> excuse me, are ingenious. Mother Nature is ingenious where a lot of these herbs will, will bridge seasons, right? You'll find them in, in multiple seasons at this time of year, all connected together. For example, we see astragalus late summer to fall, right? Powerful to be on astragalus at this time of year, right? All the way up until winter for sure. And even through winter. But if you're ever going to take astragalus, now is the time. We see other ones that, <clears throat> excuse me, bridge the um, bridge the seasons like lion's mane and reishi mushroom. You'll find reishi mushroom good any time of the year. 
really good when you when you go through these lists after the fact at home look and see hey this is going to bridge these two seasons maybe i should be using that like gynostema all three of these next seasons gynostema is a tea that you would drink a powerful adaptogen powerful for the immune system and it's going to tonify all these organ s- systems um, all at once so these ones that bridge the gaps are really good bangs for the buck you know you see turkey tail coming up a couple seasons as well you'll find shizandra in every season of the year these ones are really good bang for the buck now if you bought some let's just choose one Oria or something like that and you were only taking it in this season of the year use it you know, one or two seasons, and then you can keep that for the next year when it comes around, you know, it's never a waste. It's about building your, it's about building your herbal repertoire, right? These are things that you need ongoing daily. It's not about taking the same thing and getting out of what I call the pharmaceutical mindset. We need to get out of that. We need to start embracing herbs throughout the seasons as if we were hunter gatherers. We need to utilize them, take them through a couple seasons and then switch, right? Gradual shift changeover. The biggest point to note is that it's about the ongoing consistent use of any of these herbs, right? It doesn't have to be the same one. It's the, the consistent use of, of not all of them at once, but just embracing these herbs on these lists for the next three months, right? Or four months. This is what's going to give your body that facilitation of bringing back to that robust health. You're going to tune up these organ systems to give them the best chance they can at rebuilding back at this time of year. So a question, uh, Melissa says elderberry. Elderberry is not necessarily a tonic herb, but it's beautiful. And it's actually coming up on a slide I have ahead uh, with acute immune tonics. It is somewhat of a tonic herb from Western standpoint. It's just not a Taoist tonic herb, which means that elderberry is not something you would take every day or, or said another way, elderberry is not something that would be safe to take every day for you know long extended periods of time is all. The rest of these are very safe, ongoing. You could take any of these, every day of the year for years without side effects. That's the whole point of, of tonic herbs. Now, some, some things to note, you'll see throughout these groups, a lot of medicinal mushrooms, poria, maitake, lion's mane, reishi mushroom, chaga mushroom, cordyceps again, turkey tail, right? You'll see them everywhere, poria, reishi, chaga. Medicinal mushrooms are food for the immune system. Don't sleep on medicinal mushrooms. They're not a cure-all. They don't do everything. But when we're talking about feeding the immune system and facilitating a, a more proper or a more cohesive immune function of the body, medicinal mushrooms are where it's at. They are literally the greatest ally for the modern world because they make your body work better. They bring your body back to coherence. Sure, there's some chemistry in them that help fight for you, but they're actually like a software program where you're updating your immune system. It's like taking medicinal mushrooms would be like updating your iOS, right? Or your your operating system on your computer. You're continuously upgrading that system. We don't have time to get into the chemistry and how that works, but it's fascinating. All to do with beta-glucans and polysaccharides. They're dictating their software programs, dictating on how your immune system activates and brings back to proper optimal function. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Not sure what happened there, but... um, So one of the greatest allies, we can see that medicinal mushrooms have a wide activity of use where they're immunomodulating, antibacterial, antibiotic, antiviral, antitumoral, antimutagenic, anti-inflammatory, and literally the list goes on and on. So like I always say, if you're not on shrooms right now, you should be. You should think about that. We find that turkey tail, for example, I just pulled out some stats because there's not enough time to go through all these herbs, but turkey tail, for example, when combined combined, excuse me, with shiitake mushroom, which we do in in both of our blend products as a side note, turkey tail combined with shiitake increased natural killer cells in the body by 400% in two months of use. So I don't know about you, but that's an upgrade that I want for my body. Two months of continuous use, we're going to upgrade our immune system. Now, everybody's immune system is in different levels of activity. So just because you know, Bobby's at this level, Joe's at this level, or Sally's at this level type of thing. We're going to continuously take these medicinal mushrooms to continuously upgrade. So it doesn't mean that you're immune to everything going around. You're in the process of rebuilding or updating your your OS system when you're taking mushrooms. We find things like poria mushroom. It's been shown to increase both humoral and cellular immunity against H1N1 influenza virus. We find 
tons of statistics on different flus and colds that mushrooms will help protect us against. We find my maitake mushroom is known as the king of the immune system. It actually holds an 86 tumor inhibition rating, and it's one of the main ones at this time of the year right now going into lung season. Maitake mushroom invigorates anporia, both invigorate that spleen-stomach connection. They literally give you the, the, the power you need to invigorate that immune system at this time of year to get that spleen-stomach center going. Astragalus, like I mentioned before, you can see it here. It is one of the quintessential herbs. It's one of the premier tonics for the Y chi, that protective chi that we talked about in terms of scrubbing and keeping clean the uh, skin associated lymphatic tissue, that, that netting that I was talking about under your skin above your muscles. It is one of the premier tonic herbs for that salt. It's called the skin associated lymphatic tissue. Chaga mushroom, good at any time of the year, but it's known as the king of the medicinal mushrooms, um, contains something called betulinic acid, also known as lupiol or um, betulin. But out of, this is a University of Chicago research, out of 2,500 plant extract studies, betulinic acid found in chaga was the most promising discovery. So that's pretty good. Out of 2,500 herbs, it was the number one. We find cordyceps, also known as scarlet cordyceps, it will help deal with scrubbing those mesenteric lymph nodes. So if your digestion is bogged down, you're going to be bogging down your massive immune system in your gut, right? Those mesenteric lymph nodes, it's going to help scrub that. It's going to help with microcirculation in the body while also speeding up spleen regeneration. So we're going to get the uh, rebuilding of spleen lymphocytes, right? Our natural killer cells. We find gynostema. It is, I mentioned gynostema a few points on here because most people aren't aware. It is such a powerful tonic herb. It is the most powerful adaptogen. So if you're familiar with adaptogens, adaptogens are, are herbs that help your body adapt to stresses of all sorts. Gynostema is like the, the, the sleeping giant when it comes to adaptogenic effect and most people are unaware of. It's an easy consumable tea, but is literally one of the greatest longevity tonics known to man. Helps with digestion, calms and strengthens the nerves, adapting your body to all sorts of stresses. Uh, we find various studies and research on gynostema enhancing endurance, inhibiting tubers, tumor, excuse me, and exhibiting cellular immunity to the body. Now, it also enhances the production of antibodies in the body. So your, your, your fighters, right, how you adapt to different um, external pathogens and cytokines, right, the communication or the signaling molecules of your immune system. Okay, so again, if you want to take a screenshot of that before I switch, you're more than welcome to. I'll take a drink of water. But this is one of the main slides, the cheat sheet for daily tonic herbalism for the next three months ahead. So hopefully everybody got that. <clears throat> we'll switch here. What time is it? Got a couple minutes left. We're almost through this, guys. Now, how do you use these daily tonic herbs, right? So we want to use them ongoing and consistent but how do you use them? It's a very common question we get because we're a tonic herbal company. There's several different ways that you can consume tonic herbs and really anything you can think of works. It's more about getting it in consistently is the most important thing. One of the best ways that we know of are something called elixirs. So elixirs are probably the number one way, like I said, consumable um, of tonic herbs. It's basically a blender drink. So you can think of your mushroom hot chocolate. Uh, you can think of a smoothie yet elixirs are usually warm. So they're going to be coffee type drinks. Uh, Ayurveda talks a lot about a goat milk elixirs where they use hot goat milk, combine it with ghee and other herbs, a little bit of honey. That is a great nighttime bedtime elixir. Um, or like I said, coffee type elixirs, chocolate type elixirs. We're going to get together with community going forward. I think I'm going to do we we're talking about doing monthly um, elixir classes so you can come and learn how to build these elixirs. But this is the number one way because this is the most preferable way, right? The tastiest way to take in these tonic herbs. And we can change these throughout the year so you never get bored. Another way to take them is called an herbal draft. This is an old school way, but it's a quick and easy way. And we do use this a lot at my house. It's literally adding tonic herbs just to warm water and taking them straight. I know that's not everybody's cup of tea, right? But tasting these herbs is so powerful. Taste dictates the, physiolog the physiological response in our body. So we want to try to taste herbs. So elixirs, elixirs, herbal drafts, excellent for tasting those herbs. And you can mix them with honey. But if I'm busy on the go or my wife busy on the go, 
we'll just throw a little bit in water and just down a teaspoon of mushrooms or whatever it is, just to get these in. It's the consistent use that means everything. Another way is called honey pills. You can actually roll this into pills, but what we do at my house is we're taking raw honey, we're mixing tonic herbs together in a bowl, mixing it all together, and we're leaving that honey bowl sit out and we'll consume or use one to two teaspoons a day, you know, adding it to tea, taking it by the spoon, right? Feeding our kids, taking it by the spoon. Really, really easy way. Now, if you want to make actual honey pills like they do in Ayurveda, you're just adding more herbs than honey till it's like a a hardened paste, dry paste, and you literally can roll them into little consumable pills and take them by the mouth. You can make them ahead of time, really easy and effective. Um, but we find it's easiest to, to get raw honey, mix them. If you leave it sitting in raw honey, excuse me, in a bowl, it will start to ferment the herbs if the honey's raw, which makes them so much more bioavailable as well. Last way is what I call kitchen crafting. This is where adding them to anything you can think of, adding tonic herbs in your everyday foods. We make a medicinal mushroom popcorn at my house. It's become a, a famous thing. I'm actually going to be at the Community Natural Foods event tomorrow. We're going to be sampling out some medicinal mushroom popcorn. It's literally just making popcorn and dressing it with you know, salt and medicinal mushrooms. Sounds weird, but it is amazing. Tastes fantastic. Another good way is using nut butters as the base for mixing in these herbs, adding them to soup, stews, porridge, just making teas of them, drinking them, congee, which is a, a well-cooked porridge, dessert, chocolates, anywhere you can think of into cookie recipes, into spice rubs for meat, anywhere you can think of fitting these in once you get the kind of taste profile down, just get them in the diet, right? Homemade chocolates, easiest way ever, but any sort of kitchen crafting goes. All, if not most, if not all tonic herbs can take robust amounts of heat. So cooking with them definitely is an option. It's something you shouldn't shy away from. Now, let me see time. We've got a couple minutes. This is where I want to give you the cheat sheet. So this is where we're going to talk about the acute immune function. So, okay, we've talked about tonic herbs, how to use them, which ones you should get on to build that bulletproof immunity. But let's face it, we can do everything right and still come down with a cold or flu we can still be exposed to something that our body needs to fight off. So this is when we can rely on medicinal herbs and supplements that are getting us over the hump and back to feeling that the best, the best that we can. So there's a long list of medicinal herbs we can use. These herbs and the products I'm about to talk about are things that you should have prepared ahead of time. You definitely can leave it to the last moment, but usually if you get sick, you want these on, on hand. Um, some of these ones you want to take prophylactically like vitamin D, um, zinc quercetin, right? Quercetin can be mixed with zinc. It's an ionophore, so it's going to help you absorb your zinc better. Um, you know, garlic, elderberry, like I think it was Melissa mentioned elderberry. Elderberry is great at this time of year for the next few months. You can be using that more of a tonic herb ongoing, but a lot of these you want to keep on hand for when you get sick or when you're fighting something. At the first sign of illness, we want to embrace those tonic herbs. Now, this is a slide I suggest you, again, you take a screenshot of or a picture of. I have no affiliation with any of these products or these companies. I just think these are outstanding items that you can pick up at your local health food store, community natural foods. You can get these, put them at home, use them as your herbal repertoire for if you come down with a cold flu or illness or you're fighting something off. These are products that you'll find in my house that we've used for years. So some medicinal herbs, golden seal, echinacea, myrrh, cayenne. These are amazing. Golden seal is the king of the mucous membranes. Again, these are medicinal herbs. These are not ones you would be taking prophylactically. These are when the first sign you coming, you're coming down with a cold or flu, okay? Just want to stress that. These aren't meant to be taken long-term. These are when you're fighting something or you become sick. This combination of herbs is amazing. Golden seal, echinacea, myrrh, cayenne. We will find it in this product right here, echinacea by St. Francis Herb Farm. It's for cold and flus, nasal congestion, upper respiratory infection. And I usually combined it, I didn't get a picture of it, but with their other formula called Echinase. It's an Echinacea tincture formula. Excellent. They also have another respiratory, um, it's called uh, Respirafect, I believe. Mixing those together is such a winning strategy. I stock this at my house at all times because this has gotten me over fighting things without getting sick. You know, everyone's sick around me. I'm taking the seal. I'm avoiding colds and flus just by this product alone mixed with these. Now, mind you, I'm on a tonic herbal lifestyle, seasonal approach, but
but still don't sleep on the echinacea, right? It's something you definitely should keep on hand. If you want an excellent nasal spray, it doesn't get better. Whoops, it doesn't get better than this. The Sinu Orega, I believe it's called. It's by North American Urban Spice. This is an awesome nasal spray. It is strong. Oregano up the nose is very strong, but it is fantastic for clearing up congestion, for su uh, supporting the mucous membranes to help get that mucus flow again. And again, this, the first sign of like a sniffle or something funny going in your nose, you can take a shot of this. If you know you're going to somewhere where people are sick, you can take a shot of this up the nose to give you that protection. Oregano is an amazing herb. It's definitely not a tonic herb, so it's not something you should use all the time. But when you need it, oregano is there for you and it works. Excellent, excellent nasal spray. Excellent product as well is called Respiractin. This bottle here, they make a wide variety of products, but this is their flagship product. This is amazing for wet coughs or wet respiratory infection. So runny nose, uh, wet cough, this will help dry up that congestion. And it's safe for kids. They do make a kid's version. And it's just, in my experience, it's just watered down version of this Respiractin. But this is something, and this isn't medical advice. I'm not telling you to give it to your kids, do your own research. But we give this to our kids um, for them to fight colds and flus off. Excellent, excellent product. Again, something you want to keep on hand, keep it in, you know, if you have a second fridge or in the back of your fridge, keep it fresh, keep it there. Something definitely worth having on hand. A lot of these products, like I said, are good to buy now before they go out of stock and hard to get come cold and flu season. So you might want to act on it soon. Elderberry we talked about. Elderberry, one of my favorite cold and flu herbs, such a powerful medicine. We will have our own elderberry coming out, which I got a phenomenal freeze-dried elderberry powder, better than the crystals out there. It's, it's fantastic. It's just not ready to launch yet, but it's coming. But any sort of elderberry you can find, whether it be a powder, a juice, a syrup, crystals, excellent, excellent. Now, if you combine that with brandy, which I know most might blow people's mind, but brandy is a really aromatic alcohol. I'm not saying go hardcore with it, but adding a little bit of brandy to your elderberry, which you will find in traditional elderberry syrups, enhances the function of elderberry to break up congestion, to get those mucous membranes flowing. And again, when we have that mucus flowing is when we're strengthening that Y chi and get it active. So brandy, don't sleep on putting brandy in there. Again, use your own discretion. Uh, it's not something I'm giving to kids or anything like that, but mixing it with some elderberry, powerful, powerful, old school remedy, works amazing, antiviral, antibacterial. Now this next one is a garlic product. This is Ali Max right here, Allison. This is a very expensive product, but it is a very powerful antibiotic. I believe it's, it's probably the most powerful antibiotic you can buy besides a real antibiotic. It's a stabilized form of Allison. Allison is created when uh, there's enzyme activity, when a garlic clove is crushed for the first several minutes, there's enzyme activity and different chemistries mixing to produce Allison. It's a powerful antibiotic. They figured out a way to stabilize that and to powderize it and putting it in a pill. These bottles are expensive. I think they're $130 or something, which is a crazy price, but they work and definitely great to have on hand, especially for upper respiratory infections but you can use them anywhere you would need an antibiotic like dysbiosis, SIBO, fungal infections. Taking some of these is definitely super effective. It's just pricey is my only thing. So um, you can buy a bottle and it'll go a long time. Like it'll stay good for a long time and you don't use them every day just when you need them, but powerful medicine to have on hand. Something else I recommend you, you stock up or buy having on hand is something called N-acetylcysteine, also known as NAC. This helps hydrolyze the bonds of the mucus proteins. So if you're coming down with something and you feel that something's stuck in here, you know, and you have that thick mucus and you just want to clear your throat or stuck up in your respiratory, upper respiratory area, or even if you have a deep uh, cough, really deep lung cough that's thick and you're just coughing, coughing, taking N-acetylcysteine is going to help decrease the viscosity and thin out that mucus. Yes, there is other herbs that do this, right? A lot of other herbs that do this, but N-acetylcysteine works so well, also benefits the liver and antioxidant system, but it really powerful for clearing up that deep mucus in the body and definitely worth having on hand and easily accessible um, at the local health food store community. 
Another thing is vitamin D. You, you probably know this, you probably take vitamin D, but you want to have vitamin D on hand. And like I said before, the quercetin zinc combo, we want to take quercetin with zinc. Usually it's about 500 to a thousand milligrams. When you combine it with zinc, quercetin is called an ionophore. It's going to help the ions of zinc go into the cell. The one thing to note about quercetin is it does chelate iron out of the body, which can be good if you have high iron levels, um, hematomacrosis. If you have these high iron levels, quercetin is amazing. If you suffer from anemia, you want to take that into consideration, but even consuming or combining a little bit of quercetin with your standard daily zinc, ideally balanced with copper, it's going to do wonders for your immune health. Other ones I want to mention are essential oils eucalyptus globulus and eucalyptus radiata powerful powerful forms of eucalyptus there is like 600 or 400 varieties of eucalyptus out there this is something to take note on the eucalyptus globulus is high in terpenes so this is good again like the n-acetylcysteine but good to thin out mucus this has got these ketones in there these terpenes that are going to help dissolve the mucus and get it to flow out so when it's stuck, when you need to cough, this is what you want to use. If you don't need to cough, if you have a dry, sick cough, eucalyptus radiata is what you want to use. And this one is safe for kids. So that dry cough, you can definitely use it if you have a wet, wet cough. It's not going to help you ex, um, expel the mucus like the globulus will. But the radiata is a bit of a smoother version, does not have the, the ketones and terpenes like the globulus. But again, I keep both of these on hand for both situations. Sometimes it hurts to cough right when you're sick. So you want to do the radiata, vice versa. Sometimes you need to get it out. You use the globulus. A third option, which is a powerful option too, but it's something called Raven Sarah. You'll also see it with a T here, Raven Sarah. It's a powerful antiviral essential oil as well. It doesn't make you cough. It's actually one that I will take on airplanes because it's not going to make everyone cough around me like the globulus will. But you want to take, you know, three to five drops in your hand, cup over your mouth, breathe in. Raven Sarah is an excellent, excellent option. So pro tip, any essential oil made from the leaves of a plant, from plant leaves, by default are going to help your lungs and respiration. They're going to help you breathe better. So this could be everything from peppermint to rosemary, but essential oils are powerful plant medicine. Definitely something I believe you should keep on hand and so effective. You can actually, and I think it's on the next slide here. Yeah. So if you haven't taken a screenshot, I'm going to turn this pretty quick here. So you might want to take it if you haven't yet. But some activities you can do with essential oils is you can put one to five drops with a carrier, few drops of a carrier oil, one to five drops. Carrier oil would be anything from coconut oil to olive oil to jojoba oil to almond oil, any other oil you, you have around. Usually the thin ones are better like apricot or almond oil just because they're cleaner on your sheets and stuff. But you can put a little bit of carrier oil in the palm of your hand, one to five drops of essential oil like the eucalyptus, rub it in your hands and then rub it on your feet before bed and ideally then put socks on and go to bed. And throughout the night, you're going to pull up those essential oils through the feet and it's going to help deal with the lungs, right? It's going to travel through your blood and help your overall system. Other activities that are good at this time of year, or sorry, when you're coming down with a cold or flu, saunas. Saunas are good at any time of year. I'm a huge fan of saunas. Love regular use of sauna. Um, those heat shock proteins, it does wonders for your immune system. If you're feeling run down, wearing socks to bed, even without the essential oils, powerful, powerful to keep your circulation going really old school tactic that works. Um, keeping, like I said, essential oils with a nebulizer or diffuser going, excellent. You can do essential oil steams where you're filling boiling water into a, a bowl, uh, filling it up with boiling water, putting one to three drops of essential oil, putting a towel over your head, breathing that in. That's going to do wonders for your lung and immune health. Again, when you're fighting something, if you're dry and you need to, to moisten that system, which is a common one, right? It's either wet cough or dry cough. You can keep a nebulizer on hand. So these are inhalers. They're medical grade inhalers. They're little like a, kind of like a fish tank pump looking things with a mask. And you can buy saline solution for them. They use them for like COPD and a lot of respiratory problems. But keeping these on hand is great to lubricate the airways. And it is a good way to... Um, 
cause like a, a sterile, not a sterile environment, but a, what's the right word, antiseptic kind of environment. If you're exposed to any sort of colder flus, you can either do the 0.9 saline, which is close to body, like tears, body fluids, or hypertonic, which is a little bit more salt. And that's about a one to three. Both of these are in ampules you can buy and you put that in the nebulizer and breathe that in. Last but not least, huge fan, huge fan of cold showers, something that I do daily. You know, I can do long time now, but when I started, it was seconds, right? Now I'm long time in the cold shower. I'll have a normal shower and at the end I turn it. Now I can get it almost till the tap is off. It's that cold right at the very end. But this makes you feel like a million bucks. Definitely don't sleep on the cold shower. Out of everything, it's the hardest to do, but this is preventative only. If you've come down with something, don't be jumping into the cold showers. I mean, there is some benefit to it, but usually it can be too rough. You want to kind of stay warm, keep your blood flowing. But as a preventative prophylactic approach, getting cold showers in is going to boost that immune function, boost your chemistry of the body, and just get an overall more powerful um, circulation going to get all these lymphocytes and blood to different areas of the body, keep you as healthful as possible. So we're over time. I apologize for that. I was trying to go quick at the end here. But I want to thank everybody so much. Um, if everyone needs any pictures of the slides, you can let me know right now in the chat or come on to voice and I can flip it back. But I want to thank everybody so much for coming. Hopefully this gave you a quick and, and comprehensive rundown on how you can build the best immune system possible going into cold and flu season. Again, it starts with the tonic herbs, you know, the daily use, getting them in seasonally, and then keeping those other acute immune medicinal herbs on hand to utilize them when you need them, right? You need them to, to stock them at home, be ready for them. Definitely, you can go get them out at the time, but if you ever come down with something, you it's so much easier to have those on hand that you can embrace them at that time. So thank you, everybody. Um, let's see if there's any questions in the chat. Thank you so much. Due to meeting, it just came out. I just like, can you show the slide before? So yeah, for sure, Donna. Yeah, no problem. Also, I'll go back. So you wanted it from... So if you're, uh, if you want to stick around, you can, I'm going to go back, but if you're uh, signing off for the night, thank you and again, everybody uh, came in on the Y Chi slide. Yep. It's here. Let me go back here. Thanks, Derek. Thanks for doing this. I always appreciate your, nope. your classes and sessions. Well, thanks, Donna. Thanks for coming. It's That's awesome. So, Great to hear yeah, from you. Yeah, it's been too many years. Definitely. Yeah, it's been a long time. This, and then uh, I was in a meet work meeting that ran way over time. Oh yeah, no worries. No, I'm glad you could make it. It's so was, a long time, right? Things are starting to slowly get back where I'm teaching classes. Like I was telling everyone else, this is my third class today. Oh, wow. So my voice is just barely holding in there. But um, did you get this slide, Donna? Can you go back one slide yet? Once, yeah, totally. Yeah. So is, is this slide the beginning of your presentation? Oh, sorry. No, it wasn't. You made it to that slide. Gotcha. So beginning started here. Okay. Um, slowly can go through them. Let me see if there's any more questions. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Jean. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Joanne. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, then I had this one, Donna, on Dow's Tonic Herbalism. Got it. These are some quotes on, on why we should live in harmony with the cycles of nature. Got it. Um, this is just a, like a filler slide here. How do we follow it? This is the transitional slide. Yeah. <laughs> this is the schematic of seasonal attunement, which I'm sure you've probably seen, Donna, but you're welcome to take a picture of it. Got it. So Bernadette has a question. Bernadette, I'll get into you one second. I'll just go through this. Seasonal pillar of immune health for colds and flus. One moment. I'm getting a sure. technical delay here. Okay, go. Go ahead. Okay. And then I think you came in about here, Donna, or were you um, still? Don't have this one. Did you see this one? But I do have that one. Yes. Thank you so much, Derek. Yeah, you're welcome. It. No, totally. Um, so... Bernadette says, thank you. I have a chronic cough and constantly trying to clear my throat. Will these activities and herbs you mentioned help? Definitely. So if you think it is a chronic cough in terms of mucus stagnation, Bernadette, some things you can try is strengthening the spleen stomach, right? With the tonic herbs. I'm just going to get to them here. Um, things that really support the digestive health for that area would be poria mitaki and astragalus. These ones would be the most beneficial for that. 
And then besides that, if you wanted to symptom manage to help get that mucus out, it's always good. Whoops, sorry, I got to go through this to get ahead. It's always good to keep the eucalyptus right here somewhere. Eucalyptus globulus. This will help dissolve that mucus and you'll be able to expel it. Also, the respiractin will help dry up that cough too because um, it's, it's basically stagnation of the mucous membrane. So we want things that will help flow. Um, another one too, I'm using right now. So the smoke outside is really bothering me. I fell asleep two nights in a row with my window open, breathing it. So I'm also using this besides my tonic herbs, which is called Respir Cleanse, but it's got dispersive aromatic herbs. Um, one of the herbs, I think I have it on this slide here called Osha. If you can find this Bernadette Osha or take it in a combination like this, Osha is going to help break up that mucus so you can expel it out. It's going to be um, very aromatic, very dispersing for that, and it's going to break that up for you. So definitely you can get help with that. Um, and doing those activities will, will help big time. So want to use the eucalyptus globulus. You would take some essential oil, a couple drops in your hand like this, breathe it for a while, use a nebulizer diffuser at home, or do the trick, like I said, rubbing it on your feet will help a lot before you go to bed or during the day too. Uh, thank you, Victoria. Uh, great. That's awesome, Bernadette. Wish you the best of luck with that. So thank you again, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. And I um, didn't mean to keep you long or longer than uh, planned, but I really do appreciate you sticking in there. And like I said, we probably will be doing a monthly thing with community, uh, doing an in-person class. So if there's things that you have questions about, you can meet me there, come to my talks and ask me. Um, I'll be doing an event tomorrow at community at the Chinook location. So we'll have an event going on there. They're doing a screening of a movie and there's like a vendor thing sent up set up so you can come down try some of our samples um, have a chat that's tomorrow friday from five to nine so if you can make it love to see you guys there but thank you again everybody i'm going to sign off for now and wish you all the best of health and have a wonderful wonderful rest of the night thank you everyone good night <laughs>